Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, should the volley just hot with Shono here, about to give you a brand new series in Dawn of Titans. And this live stream slash video, we're going to be showing off some of the gameplay features within Dawn of Titans. Keep in mind, I am a Castle 7 currently, and by that, obviously, I've gone through some of the other stuff like the tutorial and that. So, one of the most important things when it comes to Dawn of Titans is you need to upgrade your gold. And anything that involves barracks, troops, troop levels is the most important thing. Like, for example, here. Your army camp is one of the most important buildings in the game because it holds your troop inventory and your battle slots. Battle slots are very important because when you're fighting a battle, you can only bring specific troops plus whatever you can request in the alliance camp. So, for example, you can bring five troops at Castle 6 and you can bring in one reinforcement which doesn't change at Castle 7 but at Castle 7 you also get an additional battle slot so it's really important anything that can boost your army and give you bigger troops is a boon because for example when you're defending bases you can bring in six like you can bring two uh, militia two archers two grenadiers and That'll make for some nice defense because Grenadier is like a thousand power and that might intimidate people away from your base. Too. So that's very important. Another important upgrade to the game is the garrison because the garrison gives you a certain amount of defenders and a level defender. This is one of the most important upgrades and obviously as you can see here we need a gold reserve level 4. So in order to build that we have to have a level 4 gold reserve so we have to spend 62,100 gold to upgrade the garrison. But, in my opinion, the army camp is more important than that. And what I'm going to show you right here is the importance of upgrading your garrison. So we're going to collect some loot here. Obviously, we have some portal stones to show you guys a couple battles. Upwards of four. So, this is one of the new lands that I just acquired. Actually, I don't think that's one of my newer ones. But it's got level four troops stationed here. So, this is another building. This is one of the newest ones I got. And we got five troops positioned plus six level six units so if you capture a land like for example here I had level four and level six troops and for example here I had level three troops so this would be a land you'd want to get rid of and replace when you look up here and see something that's more valuable obviously at level two of eight it's not worth much but you can upgrade it you mostly want to look for the ranks like a three of ten all you have to do is upgrade it and it's not a big deal you want to find the maximum rank levels so obviously you don't want something that's like 2 of 5, 4 of 8 is pretty good. So we're going to talk about some of the troops here. So at first you start off by getting militia. I think at like castle 2 or 3 you get archers. Archers are really important because archers counter spearmen, militia counter archers, and spearmen counter militia. That's the basic grand scheme of things. And Grenadiers are really good for taking out large waves of militia, spear guys, or even archers. But, obviously, they're fragile, so you want to keep them in the very back. Keep your archers protected. You kind of want to have a 2 to 1 uh, melee to range ratio, including your Titan. So, for example, an optimal setup would be to have 3 melee and 2 ranged at my level. And then a third ranged if you're bringing support. It's very optimal. You can also craft spells in the game. So there's a couple ways you can acquire spells. You can acquire spells from battle, or you can go into the Spell Forge. And as you can see, we have an upgrade available for that. We can get the Spell Forge up to level 2. So we can craft 3 spells, and we can have up to 15 in our inventory. So by crafting spells, you can craft uh, shields so you don't take as much damage from attacks. I like using fireballs and archers. That way you don't have to really focus them down because going after the back units is really bad because they're the ones that are going to mess you up in the long run. So if you can take out a Grenadier with a Fireball or even Lightning them, that's really good. And the way you can get your inventory, um, you can go with the Relics here. Goliaths are a really good unit to put on defense, especially in like your home base because you can't normally get them until a higher castle. So if you get a Goliath, put it in your castle and just leave it there. It's going to make defending a lot easier. So basically, if you click on any of these archers, you're going to get a free archer. So if you don't need the room, don't do it. Um, you could also use this to get fireballs. We're going to use one just to show you guys that you gain a fireball. So that's some good stuff. Now you also can get some food and some gold. 
Every one of these is 10,000. I don't know if they have higher ranked ones. And over the course of the campaign, as well as playing the game naturally, you're going to get Titans. One of my best acquisitions was getting a three-star fighter from one of the raids. We'll pull up a screenshot on that momentarily, just to show that off. All right, so this was the raid that I did a couple days ago from uh, Hades X, a guy named King Max. As you can see, this guy had his uh, garrison undefended, and look at all that loot. So in the process, I also got a three-star Cormac, which was absolutely insane being able to get that card. So a great acquisition there. And my best loot of all time was against the leader, who also decided to leave his garrison undefended. And look at all that loot we got. That is just gorgeous. Also got a terror spell. Not a big deal. But yeah, you get the point. Some good raids there. So obviously from tapping out, we got to reload in the game. But basically it gives you an idea. Uh, Death Clutch 5150. Yes, I have 58,000 subscribers on YouTube. I also have over 1,300 videos. Hope you get to check them out. Cool to see in Dawn of Titans they have classes that are stronger than other classes. I always like that game mechanic. Yes, absolutely. That's the beautiful part of strategy. And I'm going to do a couple battles just to kind of show that off as we do have 12 portal stones. So, obviously here's our base here. We have another recruit it looks like. So we got uh, Abu Shama. And we got Block Boy. Is this a level 4? And then we got uh, B. Hughes 2 we also know from Clash of Clans. And we also got Shadow Jester, who's Scotty B, that needs to learn how to play the game. But um, we have Bears Fan 333, 249,000 BP. So basically what you want to look for, obviously you don't want to be attacking somebody at 44,000 power, and he's got a decent amount of loot. You want to look for the juicy ones. Like, for example, if we scroll up, uh, hopefully Hades is still on the list. Yep. Alright, so as you can see, he's got a shield, so still carrying a bunch of loot. I think the guy just is an idiot and doesn't play the game very well. So let's look at his lands and see if we can loot one. Here's a good one. 16,000 food, 1,060 VP, only 3,275 power, which is not that bad. So we're going to lose our shields. We captured new lands. So as you can see, he's got five level 7 troops. So let's take a quick look at what he actually has. So it looks like he's got a little mix of everything. He's got two militia, two archers, and a spearmen. So with that said, we want to bring one militia, two archers, two spearmen. We can actually bring a grenadier because we have the hero. We can use a fireball. And let's take another militia. And right, let's go on the battle. It should be an easy fight. Some of the fights you get flanked. These fights are really easy when you got all the guys on the top. So basically, you want to send your spearmen after the militia. Um, we're going to send the titan up here. We're going to send the grenadier. Let's send that one up there. We'll send that one there. We'll have our hero go here. So it looks like he doesn't have any uh, pikemen. And then we'll just send everything up. So this should be a pretty easy fight. So. Like I was mentioning for the arrows, just plunk them in right here. Down go the archer is real easy there. The rest of the fight is pretty self-explanatory, nothing really to brag about. Obviously we're going to lose a militia and a spear guy. We don't want to lose an archer. We need to kill this guy quick before it gets to our guys. So the archer might go under 95% health, unfortunately, because we didn't react. And the archer is still up in the back. So we didn't need the reinforcements, but as you can see, the uh, pikeman is going to take the damage. So the archers do not. And there's an easy victory and a lot of food. Dawn of uh, Titans has some gameplay like DC Legends. I think it's better in DC Legends because it's more real time. Whereas DC Legends is turn based. And you also level up your Titans. Obviously a 3 star Titan is going to take a lot more XP to level up than a level 1 Titan. 
but it's going to be a lot stronger. So because we have the medical school, we actually have 150 health plus the 95% threshold. And you can spend gems to keep your troops. It's usually not worth it. Unless, for example, it takes one gem to revive a grenadier, then at which point you probably want to do it. But 40 gems that revive 3 troops when you steal 16,000 food is totally not worth it. So you want to look for the good loots like Hades. Um, if you see somebody around five, 6,000 power, you probably want to stay away from them unless you're like level 10 or 11. Um, this guy here is 5230. And he's got like 11 troops, so you want to avoid that. Um, so level 6 here has 3730, but these are weaker troops. Uh, thank you, Robert Cartagena, for the Twitter pop. I really appreciate that. So a base like this would be really easy to deal with, but you also have to think of risk versus reward. And if you're only getting 4,000 food and gold, you pretty much have to guarantee a victory. That's not the type of loot you want to go for. So let's go take a look at other bases. Let's not mess with Bears fan. So here's a good section here. No defense, we should be able to find a couple juicy targets within this alliance here. Alright, so here's a good one. 11,053 food. Weird notification there. But what we want is gold. You're going to go through gold a lot more than food. So you kind of want to have all the lands that you conquer as gold. Trust me, it's a lot better. Um, a lot of strongholds getting attacked. This guy, this doesn't really have that much loot. If I needed food, I would have attacked that base. Um, let's see who else we can get. This guy's got a lot of land. But yeah, basically you want to try to have a Titan on all the lands. We'll go over that in a minute. I really want to loot somebody first. A lot of low-level people in these clans. My goodness. I think they just check General Chen like, Oh, let's join for protection. No, because you're going to get destroyed. Let's raid this guy. So, six troops. And let's take our reinforcement. We did not use the militia, so we're able to use it again. And we don't have spells available. I really don't care. We should be fine as long as we don't get flanked. And it doesn't look like we're going to get flanked this battle, so this is going to be really good. Alright, so in the beginning, we kind of want to put our militia to the right. And let the... Uh, Titan attack most of them. So we're going to have the uh, Spear Chuckers get eliminated early. So it's kind of how we want to do the tactics. We'll deploy the other militia member and we'll help reinforce. So you can see by following the guidelines, it worked really well. The militia is not taking a lot of damage. We could back this one out to try to save the troop. I think we're going to do that as the fight is really good. So the militia does not need to go anywhere. Let's just get these guys up there. A Titan can take the rest of the hits from the Spearman. There's no reason for you to go up, sir. So yeah, the AI does need a little bit of work in the game, but it's pretty good. Did I just get the same WWE Champion notification? No, it's on my phone. So we got a Cold Ring. And we only lost one unit. We were able to keep everything else, so that's a good raid. So we looted him, and now a lot of the uh, choices went away. So this Sparta does not look as juicy as before. Let's check this guy's land. If he has a juicy one, that's not too bad. We only got three portal stones, so we can only loot somebody's uh, resources. And you generally want to try to find somebody with undefended at like level 10 or 11. Because they're probably going to have some good loot. Here's a good one. Unfortunately, he has crappy land, so it's not going to work too well. Yeah, 6518 with 1390. So, in a setup like this with level 3 troops, let's take one militia, three archers, and a grenadier. We don't need the reinforcement spearmen. So the fight is kind of flanked. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our militia here. And we're just going to try to overwhelm the left side. Let's put one archer supporting it. Let's put both archers. 
support the Titan. So we're probably going to lose one militia. That's okay. But look at that destruction. The militia might even just be able to survive at this point if we just back them up. Now this is back out like a coward. There's no point taking unnecessary damage. We might be able to save that militia. And let's see if we're able to do it. A lot of the new characters in Mortal Kombat X do have 110% power generation. So we got a Bright Star. And let's see if we were able to save that Militia by backing off. And we barely missed it. So unfortunately we didn't save them, but not a huge deal. So that's the whole raiding aspect of the game. So here we have an undefended land. So what you want to do for a defended land is you can put troops in it. You can also put your Titans in it. You can also click on the info for more stats. You see 1178 health, 65 damage. Herrick has 93 damage, 1672 health. So Runa has 1319 health and 36 attack. This is more, like Paladins are more of a tankier uh, type of Titan. Whereas Alanoth is probably more of an offensive Titan since it's an infiltrator. And you can kind of see the classes. Like a Berserker is obviously going to be more offensive than defensive and the like so there's different classes champion I have to do some research on that what they all are but yeah there's like four or five different classes and obviously if they're grayed out you can't use them on a land so we have Kobar available we're gonna put him in and you can throw some troops in just do that throw a grenadier in there and the power goes from whatever it was to 5910 nothing to brag about but it's not too bad. So this is obviously an older lane because it has level 4 troops. But it's still better than not having troops at all. And obviously the main garrison has a lot of troops. Some good stuff there. So you can go in the attack log and you can see who raided you. Nobody has been messing with me. I'm not really sure why. Um, you also have achievements that you can train uh, you next. If you complete the campaign you also get gems too. Gems are important for many reasons. You can use gems to buy new titans. You can also use gems to get more resource plots. I think for starting off, it's best to save your gems for titans. Until you can get like a 3 or 4 star titan. But if you can get lands, like mine is like 700 gems. I think it was 300, 500. But by getting more lands, you can obviously get more resources. You can get more looted. But you also have a higher cap too. And there's also daily... Uh, things too so you can get a decent amount of gems for just doing dailies like you can get over 150 gems just by completing your days the one that I always seem to have the most problem with is reinforcement so I urge some of you guys that are watching these YouTube videos to join the Alliance Lions Blood which is right here this is mine Brian's and Scotty's Alliance so if you join Lions Blood be sure to request troops I will be sure to donate as well you also get gems for donating troops which is pretty badass and there you can see the members right there obviously I'm doing the most battling but Brian is a higher level so he gets more VP than me so there's also leaderboards so you can see the league alliances and the league prizes so if you're the number one alliance you will get a three star fighter for free and even if you're in like the top I think everybody gets a one star fighter but yeah, you can get a three-star fighter if you finish in first place in this league, and it gets higher as you go up. Later on, I'm sure like the top ten gets three-star fighters, but it's a good incentive to place well. Obviously, it encourages recruiting and zerging, but I'd rather have quality over quantity. If it takes us five weeks to get out of this league because we're playing smart, well, we're probably going to be a powerhouse when we get to the next league. So couple important things to note again you want to obviously max out your gold collectors you have to focus on the storages in or the vaults and you have to focus on the granary when you get them because if you're going to be able to level everything up and certain things you have to upgrade in order to level up your castle like you have to have a level six armory you have to have a level two hall of titans hall of titans lets you hold more titans so 120 titans is a ridiculous amount but keep in mind when you have a bunch of land you're going to need said titans, and you don't want to have like your best fighters always defending. So you want to have a nice mix and match of that. 
Um, portal stones are the purple resource here. And I think it's like six minutes per thing. So the only way you're ever going to be like using all your portal stones is if you put it on your phone. So I don't know if Facebook actually links from iPad to phone. But put this game on your phone and play it. Don't put it on your tablet if you can help it. Don't be like me. Because like if you want to go take a shit and spend your portal stone, you can't do it. You got to wait until you like take a lunch or something. So, here's the Adventurer's Guild. You can get some extra side missions. They're pretty hard, but you get some new fighters. So, that's kind of cool, being able to complete the Adventurer's Guild. Uh, the Arcane Tower is just like the armor. You can level up spells with that. We're going to level up the Fireball. Four hours and 50 minutes for that. More damage is obviously good. So, you can spend food to level up spells. I really welcome that. You can also spend food to level up troops in the armory, which is 76,800 gold. We actually had to upgrade some stuff for that. Uh, is the beta event you mentioned a couple days ago still happening today? I played For Honor. I don't think it's for me. Not my kind of game. Like, the combat just feels a little bit too clunky for me. So yeah, and there's obviously more stuff that you can get over time. But yeah, it's very important to get your dailies done. And we're going to explain some of the relics really quick. Like, a lot of the relics give you a property. I imagine once you get higher up, there's more properties as well. Like you get Titan health on a gear. So you can also repair said gear. So obviously, a piece of crap gear, you can sacrifice a couple and then sacrifice your food. And you repair the gear item. If you have something that's really good, like a three or four star item. Let's take, for example, the Tempest Axe. Say you want to repair it. Well, that's actually working. So maybe it's because it's full durability and not empty. But I know that with certain things, the durability is really low. You can also click, click to your uh, Titans, so you can equip them with relics and skills. Uh, fusion... It looks like you can fuse Titans to level them up. So... It looks like it does unlock skills. So that's where it's good to have extra Titans, so... Like, for example, you can fuse Cormac. And when you use Cyrus, you can actually unlock another skill and unlock a relic. So, it seems worth doing for a one-star fighter to be able to unlock skills. So, that's kind of a cool thing to do. And through the other tab, you can recruit units quickly. There's two barracks. I think you get the second barracks at either Castle 4 or Castle 5. Really good for training troops. We're going to train up five, uh, we're gonna train up four militia and an archer. I want to have more archers, but obviously we need to get the army camp up before we can properly do that. And you can click on spells. You can also upgrade to the arcane tower. And buildings, builder's yard, if you can get three builders, great. There's a starter pack that I think is $4.99, which is a good investment. Obviously, you want to get the second builder before you take that so you can get maximum value and get the third builder basically for free. But yeah, it's a great offer. And there's only three buildings left to unlock. You do get more... Uh, food reserves and vaults and mines as you love level up your castle So that's some pretty cool stuff there if you guys like this little video on Dawn of Titans and want to see some more gameplay Please give this video a like rating comment subscribe share this video amongst your friends And as a favorite check out my other Dawn of Titans videos playlist Facebook Twitter and Twitch which are all Hollywood Shono once again if you like this game feel free to join Lion's Blood and we'd love to have some more members, especially so I can complete the donations every day. Have a wonderful day, kids. www.youtube.com slash Hollywood Show now. Subscribe, bitches!